Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, as Pat said, our mission at Working Films is to advance social justice and environmental protection. So how do we do that? Uh, like everyone here, I presume, we believe that storytelling is a catalytic ingredient for informing and inspiring people to take action. We've always said we work in documentary because you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Um, our bottom line has always been about what happens when the lights come up. And our job is to make sure that audiences have something meaningful to do when they've been moved by a film. We don't decide what that is by ourselves. Uh, we believe that change happens from the ground up and we listen to leaders who are directly impacted by issues and who are leading the charge for change. Um, our process is to work with community-based leaders and with their accomplices at the state and national level. And with them, we facilitate a process of developing a vision, specific goals and outcomes, critical audiences to reach, films that will speak to and motivate those audiences and that remain aligned with the longer range narrative shift uh, that we wanna see happen. I'm gonna explain it with an example. Uh, North Carolina is my home, and what you see here is 40,000 tons of coal ash in it. Uh, coal ash is what's left after coal burns. It's toxic, but it's less regulated than the trash in your home. It's stored in unlined pits, typically. It's usually by waterways, and overwhelmingly, it's in low-income communities of color. Uh, this was in 2014. It wasn't the first time that coal ash has spilled. Um, when it happened, environmental justice advocates had a number of challenges. Uh, first, no one knows what coal ash is, or almost no one. Uh, the state legislature and governor had deep ties to Duke Energy, who was responsible for the spill, and they were moving very quickly to pass a supposed cleanup bill that was not going to adequately clean up the mess or protect communities living around this. Meanwhile, residents didn't know if they could drink their water or take a bath. Because we'd worked to address environmental injustice, organizations came to us to find out what films might exist. Um, to explain this problem, and we didn't know of any. So we put out a call for media, and we assembled a compilation of short films, which at the time were, you know, shorts and uh, excerpts of works in progress about this issue. Informed by our partners, which included, you know, grassroots community groups living around this waste, we toured collage stories across the state to every impacted community living around this waste and near the spill and to every major metropolitan area um, to build broad public demand for a stronger cleanup bill. Longtime organizers and toxics experts, river keepers were on hand when these films screened to explain what the risks were and how people could protect themselves, but also how they could take action by participating in public comment periods um, you know, showing up for hearings and writing letters to the editor. North Carolina is not the only place dealing with coal ash, and these additional states aren't the only place either. It's in hundreds of communities across the U.S. So we took coal ash stories from North Carolina and replicated the same statewide model in other states dealing with it, over a dozen. The series has been responsible for stopping the expansion of a waste facility uh, in Kingston, Tennessee, where the largest coal ash spill in history took place. A facility wanted to expand and had a required public comment period, but it wasn't announced. So we held screenings to build enough support to get it reopened, and it, it didn't happen. It helped to catalyze grassroots groups where they didn't exist around these pits. People you know, wanted to do something about coal ash, hosted a screening, and groups formed that still exist. It even formed a regional coalition when organiz organizers from different regions came together and screened the films. Those are kind of you know, what we look for in outcomes beyond numbers of screenings. And really, you know, it mobilized residents for next time. And the next time happened when Hurricane Florence hit and coal ash spilled into the Dan River. Coal ash stories was the first time that we had used films in a concentrated period across the state. And we have continued, at a, really at a pivotal policy moment, and we've continued that model across states. 
all over the nation to tackle many issues ranging from voting rights and tax fairness to aging and climate disaster. Uh, again, beyond the numbers, what we're looking for, you know, we do want audiences to gain understanding and to become motivated to act. We have seen that the subscriber and um, you know, supporter base of our partners has increased, but we've also facilitated a process of partnership building among the organizations that are partnering, um, you know, prioritizing each local event to meet the goals of that community, but aligning it with partners at the national, the national and state level. Um, and what our national and state level partners tell us is it's really increased the authenticity of you know, a value that they share that change does happen from the ground up. And it's helped through this medium of film, which I think is so unique to give them an opportunity to work together using the power of story, you know, to involve people oftentimes for the first time to get involved in change. Oh, this is just more people involved in screenings. <laughs> This is how we describe our work, the right media at the right moment to move the dial. Uh, we do listen to the stories, um, you know, what partners tell us the stories are needed, what their long range, you know, vision is so that we can meet that uh, with stories that, that advance that vision uh, and speak to the audiences that are critical for them to reach. Uh, we do deploy films at pivotal policy and regulatory moments, so timing is really what it's all about, um, really to move the dial toward progress. Our next initiative, launching this spring, is focused on ending racist attacks on immigrant communities in the United States uh, and illuminating that it's not just happening at the border. Our partners include United We Dream, the Undocu Black Network, the National Domestic Workers Alliance, and NACASEC, which is the National Korean American Service and Education Consortium. You know, screenings will help audiences understand and participate in the actions that these organizations are putting forward and that grassroots groups will put forward um, that apply to their local communities. We believe, very much as Kara was lifting up, that the power and agency of storytelling should be held by those who are most affected. And in the spirit of really nothing about us without us is for us, uh, we're designing this compilation, including the selection of films and who's making the films to ensure that they represent directly impacted communities and that there's a process of accountability to those who are featured, um, who the stories are about, so that's really something that we're embracing. The series also just won't feature tragedy. We want to showcase the resilience and legacy of immigrant communities and how that's been something that they've um, you know, demonstrated in the face of ongoing attacks throughout history. We want to illuminate another way forward and show the diversity of immigrant communities and you know, combat the erasure of Asian immigrants and black immigrants, Pacific Islander immigrants, and give space for audiences to generate visions and plans and push back. So that's just a recap of the work that we do. I'm excited to participate in the Q&A of this and excited to speak to you all further. <laughs>